Hi there, it's Matt Walker here and welcome to the podcast. Two quick disclaimers to begin with. First, I apologize for my personality. Second, I think it's safe to say that when most podcasters think about their audience, perhaps falling asleep or nodding off while listening, it can be profoundly disheartening. However, based on the topic of this podcast, I'm going to actively encourage that kind of behavior from you. Um, in fact, knowing what I know, particularly about the relationship between sleep and memory, it's the greatest form of flattery for me to think about people like you not being able to resist the urge to strengthen and consolidate what I'm telling you by falling asleep. So please feel free just to ebb and flow in and out of consciousness throughout all of these episodes. I will take absolutely no offense. And I should also mention, by the way, that the podcast is going to be very wide ranging. We'll speak about topics such as sleep and diet, sleep and weight control. We'll speak about sleep and exercise, sleep and mental health. We'll speak about sleep and sex and relationships, we even address the idea of a sleep divorce. So lots of stuff to come. And of course, we'll have a whole series on dreaming, lucid dreaming. But in these first couple of episodes, I want to just go over the basics of sleep. So let's address the first fundamental question then. What is going to happen when you go to bed tonight? Well, it turns out that your brain is going to go on a remarkable roller coaster ride in and out of these different stages of sleep. And sleep, at least in human beings, and in fact in all mammalian species, has been broadly separated into two main types. On one hand, we have non rapid eye movement sleep, or non REM sleep for short. And non REM sleep has been further subdivided into four different stages. Um, <laughs> unimaginatively called stages one through four, increasing in the depth of sleep. I say unimaginative because I always wished for something more grand in terms of the naming. You know, I remember as a child hearing about a car called a Maserati Quattroporte, and I thought it sounded like the most sophisticated thing in the world. I subsequently learned that translated from Italian, it simply means Maserati four door. But in Italian, it sounds so wonderfully elegant. So I just wish that we could have done something similar for the stages of non REM sleep for one through four. But I'm going off base here, aren't I? Focus, Matthew. This is supposed to be a short form podcast. Anyway, back to the stages of non REM sleep one through four. So Stages one and two, that's the lighter form of non-REM sleep, whereas stages three and four, that's the deeper form of non-REM sleep. Now, on the other hand, we have rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep, named um, not after the popular Michael Stipe pop band of the 1990s, but because of these bizarre horizontal shuttling eye movements that occur underneath your eyelids during rapid eye movement sleep. And REM sleep is the principal stage within which we dream. Now, that depends on your definition. If you have a loose definition of what dreaming is, well, it turns out that we dream in almost all stages of sleep. And we'll learn much more about that in the future episodes dedicated to this thing called dreaming. But it's really during REM sleep when we have what most of us think of as dreams. There's really hallucinogenic, the long narratives that's bizarre, it's emotionally filled. Those are the dream experiences of REM sleep. Those two types of sleep, by the way, non-REM and REM, are going to play out in a battle for brain domination throughout the night. And that cerebral war is going to be won and lost every 90 minutes, and then it's going to be replayed every 90 minutes. And what that will produce is a standard cycling architecture of sleep. I mentioned that it's 90 minutes for the average human adult, but some people will have a shorter non-REM to REM cycle, while other people will have a longer duration of non-REM to REM sleep cycle. 
but on average, it's about 90 minutes for most of us. It's also very different for different species, by the way. For example, birds will have a very short non-REM to REM cycle, lasting maybe just four or five minutes, whereas giraffes will have a cycle length of about 24 minutes. But we have a cycle length of 90 minutes. It's quite the spread across phylogeny. But let's get back to your night of sleep. Upon first falling asleep, you'll go into the light stages of non-REM, stages one and two, and then you'll gradually descend down into the deeper stages of non-REM, stages three and four. And remarkably, it's during deep non-REM sleep when your brain will erupt with these incredibly powerful, large brain waves. And those deep, powerful brain waves will flow over your cortex, almost like this calming, bathing bath that moves from the front to the back of your brain, from the front to the back, over and over again. And we also see another fascinating electrical brainwave burst during non-REM sleep called a sleep spindle. And these are short, synchronous bursts of electrical brainwave activity. They last for around about a second to a second and a half and these sleep spindles, they're almost like these champagne cork pops of electrical activity that will ride on top of those big, powerful, slow, deep brain waves. Now, after about 60 or 70 minutes into your first sleep cycle, your brain is going to start to rise back up again, and it will go back up into the lighter stages of non-REM sleep, and then it will pop up and it will have a short REM sleep period. And then back down it goes again, down into non-REM sleep and up into REM sleep. And as I said, your brain will cycle that way every 90 minutes. However, what changes is the ratio of non-REM to REM within those 90-minute cycles as you move across the night. And what I mean by that is in the first half of the night, the majority of your 90-minute sleep cycles is going to be comprised of lots of deep non-REM sleep and very little REM sleep. But as you push through to the second half of the night, now that seesaw balance will actually change. And instead, the majority of those 90-minute cycles are going to be comprised of much more rapid eye movement sleep, or dream sleep, as well as that lighter form of non-REM sleep that we call stage two non-REM sleep. I, of course, hope that you find this information as fascinating and sort of enchanting and wonderful as I do. But beyond its intellectual merit, it turns out that there are real practical implications to understanding how your sleep is structured. The folks supporting today's episode are Athletic Greens. Now, I know this is an ad, but before you hit the fast forward button, can I at least tell you why I selected them as a sponsor? Athletic Greens is a nutrition drink, and it provides a really quite exhaustive array of different vitamins and minerals, biotics, antioxidants. It's a long list, but you get the picture. Now, I do want to be clear that I try to get all of my nutritional needs from real meals. But I also know, however, that hard as I try, I am not going to hit all of my targets on any given day. So there are really two main reasons why I've been using Athletic Greens for a couple of years. And I buy it myself, by the way, I don't get it for free and I've been using it uh, long before this show. The first is this, when it comes to my health, I like insurance policies and I'd prefer to have a full coverage plan. And that's one reason I like Athletic Greens. Second, I did my diligence on the science behind the ingredients, and I'm a big fan of empirical data as ground truth. So if any of this sounds interesting to you, head on over to athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker, and you will get some money off your first order. Also, they have kindly offered a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five travel packs with your first purchase. So as I said, head on over to athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker. And now let's get back to the podcast. The reason it's so important to understand how sleep is structured is the following. 
Let's take an example of someone who typically goes to bed around 10 p.m. and wakes up around 6 a.m. Now, by the way, I'm not suggesting that's the ideal sweet spot for perfect sleep. It's just the sleep schedule of this particular individual in the example. But this night, that person wants to wake up and get a jump start on the day. Perhaps they've got an early morning flight or they just want to get to the gym early. So instead of waking up at 6 a.m., which is their normal time, they decide to wake up at 4 a.m. How much sleep have they lost? Well, they've lost two hours from an eight-hour sleep window, so they've lost 25% of all of their sleep. Well, yes and no. They may have lost 25% of their entire sleep, but because REM sleep typically comes in the second half of the night, and especially those last few hours, they may have lost 50, 60, even 70% of all of their REM sleep. That's why it is important for us to understand not just simply that there are different types of sleep, but to understand exactly how sleep is structured across the night. And by knowing that information, you can then design the very best personalized schedule for you, the individual, so that you can optimize your sleep and obtain all of those different stages of sleep. Because as we'll learn in future episodes, all stages of sleep are critical. Different types of sleep perform different functions for the brain and the body at different times of night, but we need all of those stages of sleep. There is no one stage of sleep that's more important. So, that is a whirlwind tour of exactly what will happen when your head hits the pillow tonight. Oh, and they keep telling me at the end of these episodes to tell you to subscribe and leave a review. And as I said before, I'm just not going to do that. I think it's pretty simple. If you like these podcasts and you enjoy them, then you're naturally going to keep listening. Honestly, I just want you to have fun listening to the episodes, and I really just hope that you find them valuable. I want to make clear, I am not a medical doctor. None of the content in this podcast should be considered as medical advice in any way, shape, or form, nor prescriptive in any way. The podcast does not represent any form of medicine or any other healthcare professions. And with that, I will simply say thanks so very much for listening and tuning in. Actually, who says tuning in these days for downloading these episodes? And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care and goodbye for now.